Hi guys, and welcome back to yet another practical Rhino Jewelry Care tutorial. I'm Jack, and in today's short lesson, I'm going to walk you through how to check and prepare a Rhino model for 3D printing, add a shrinkage allowance, and finally export as an STL file that can be printed and cast. As well as the how, I'll also explain the why, breaking down my decision making process along the way. With that short introduction out of the way, let's get stuck in. Now before we begin prepping our file and adding shrinkage, let's have a quick and very simplified look at the lost wax casting process so that we can gain a better understanding of how and where shrinkage mostly takes place. First is the production of our 3D printed wax. This is then attached to a sprue base and has a flask placed on top. Liquid investment or plaster is poured in and left to set. The flask is then placed into a kiln and the wax is burned out. This leaves behind a negative space replica of our 3D printed part inside the investment thus becoming a single use mould. Molten precious metal is then poured or injected into the plaster mould under vacuum or centrifugal force. This is then left to cool and solidify. Once cooled the investment is then removed from the flask. This leaves behind our raw casting ready for desprewing and any further manufacturing processes. Most of our casting shrinkage occurs here in the process. As the hot liquid precious metal cools and solidifies, it contracts or shrinks, making our design slightly smaller. This is because metals are less dense in their liquid state than their solid state. How much shrinkage is estimated to occur? Well this is dependent upon a number of considerations, but more on that later in the video. Now before we get anywhere near scaling the model, there's just a few checks that we need to do to check that our file is going to be suitable for the 3D printing process. So the first thing to do is to remove any stones and unwanted poly surfaces or services or meshes from the model. So in this case, we have a stone in the model, which I don't intend to print in with the model. So I'll just delete that. Now we need to check for naked and non-manifold edges. So I'll go to Analyze, Edge Tools, Show Edges. It asks me to select surfaces or poly surfaces or meshes for edge display. Just hold down Control and click A on the keyboard to make sure you select all of the objects you want to print and hit Enter. It tells me here that I have no naked edges and no non-manifold edges. So that means that the model is watertight and shouldn't cause any issues for printing. And the third thing that we'll do, if at all possible, is try and reduce the number of parts in our model. So I know here that I've got two parts. And if I'm not sure how many parts are in the model, I can just hold down Control, press A again, and it tells me that two poly surfaces added to selection. Now as long as these parts intersect and they're both watertight, it shouldn't cause you any issues for printing. But if you really want to be belt and braces with this, I would try and Boolean union all your poly surfaces together into one shell. So in this case, I will select both of my parts and we'll hit Boolean union from the toolbar on the left. And if successful, that will join it into one part. Now I would recommend that you check again for naked edges at this stage to make sure that the Boolean operation hasn't caused any issues. So I'll just go to Analyze, Edge Tools, Show Edges, click my model, hit Enter again. And again, we've got no naked edges, uh, no non-manifold edges. So this file should be sound for 3D printing and not cause us any problems. And if you do have any naked edges or non-manifold edges, you'll need to find, fix and repair these. But that's a subject for a whole nother video. So now that the model has been prepared for 3D printing, we can move on to increasing the scale of the design to compensate for shrinkage during the lost wax casting process. We'll do that by increasing the overall size of the model by percentage or scale factor. The amount you'll need to scale the model by will depend upon the metal you intend to cast it into, the estimated mass or weight of the design, if you're direct casting from a print or intend to mould a 3D print or casting to make a master pattern, and to a lesser extent, the 3D printing material used, whether that be resin, wax or other. There are some other factors too, but these are the main ones. If you're not sure how much to add, always show your file or design to your caster first and ask them what percentage allowance they recommend. In the interest of simplicity, we're going to assume you're direct casting a 3D printed wax from your file. As a rule of thumb, scale by 1-2% to for silver and gold, and 2-3% to for platinum. That relates to a scale factor of between 1.01 and 1.03. Now a small but important disclaimer here, these numbers are estimated and approximate and may differ from caster to caster. Casting is not an exact science and results can vary. If in doubt, always ask your caster. So with that explained, now we can move on to actually scaling the ring. So we're going to assume that we're going to direct cast this into 18 karat yellow gold. 
It's a fairly lightweight design, so we only need to scale it by 1%. So we'll do a scale factor of 1.01. .01. So to do the scaling, we're going to use the scale command. So I'll go to transform, scale, 3D. Select object to scale. This is my poly surface here. I press enter. Base point, this is where it will scale outwards from. So it doesn't really matter too much, but I generally just go with zero. So I'll type zero and press enter. And the scale factor, as we said, 1%. So I type 1.01 .01, and then finally press enter again. And now it will increase the overall scale of this model by 1%. So now the final part of this video, how to export the file so it's suitable for 3D printing. So to do that, we'll go to file and then export selected. We'll select our model to export, hit enter. Then where we have save as type, yours will probably be by default as a Rhino 7 3DM file. Click the drop down list, go to near the bottom and look for STL, which is short for stereolithography. That's a universal file uh, format for 3D printing. So we can uncheck all of these boxes here that say save small, save geometry, etc. None of those need to be ticked. Then in the file name, I'm going to call this Marquis ring. Then I'll generally put the date that the file was exported. So if I do another version, I know which is the latest file. Then I'll generally put the metal it's going to be cast into. So I'll put 18 carats yellow gold. And finally, I'll add in a note about how much shrinkage percentage I added. So I'd put plus 1%. Then that way, if I open this again in the future and I want to send it off to be, say, printed and cast again, and I've forgotten if I've had a shrinkage, I can just look at the file name and I know that it's already been allowed and how much it was. So that's all my data. I click save. Now the export mess resolution box pops up. In the field where it says millimeters, type in 0 0.002. This is a fairly standard export resolution that I use for mesh files. And all this is doing is saying how close the exported file will be to the original Rhino file because we're translating from a NURBS or Rhino object to a polygon mesh. So with that typed in, we click OK. And then we get another box pop up which asks us whether we want to save in binary or ASCII, always choose binary. And it doesn't really matter whether you've got export open objects checked or not, because in theory, if we've done our checks and prep properly for 3D printing, we should have no open objects. And then we click OK, and now the file is exported and ready for 3D printing. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful, guys. If you've got a question or a comment, drop it in the comment section, and I'll try my best to respond. Well, thanks for watching. If you'd like to inquire about booking online Rhino training with me, just drop me an email. The address is in the description. And if you appreciate the free lessons I'm creating, you can say thanks by treating me to the price of a coffee via buymeacoffee.com. Just click on the link in the description. And finally, don't forget to subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss my next video. See you next time.